the virgin water, it's really something you have to experience when you're fishing a lake that gets pressured at this point only a couple times a year. It doesn't matter what you throw in the water, a fish is going to hit it. I just sped up just because we were in like three, four, five feet of water to like about four or five miles an hour. Ross had a hit and then bang, this thing just hammered my spoon. It's a very light rod I have too. It's not helping matters much. It's, uh, it's a pretty decent fish. I mean for a shallow water lake trout. We have uh, 57 degree Fahrenheit water temperatures here. They're pretty active. Hey, hey all right. Nothing wrong with that. Not bad. All right. Cool. That's a good way to start. I have a feeling Echoing Lake has a few lake trout in it. Another trout from across the top of this shoal. This one's not quite as large, but you know what? Look at the vivid colors on this thing. Trolling, drifting, casting across the same rocky shoal off this point. The other boys joined us and they're into lake trout as well. Pretty much one after another. All day long on Equi, these guys. I'm not sure what I got here, but this mid lake shoal seems to be teeming with pike, so surprisingly, my guess is probably a pretty decent pike. Wow. They like that hot pink daredevil. All right, this is really quite incredible. The uh, camp is right there. We just motored across. There's a couple islands right across from the camp, and we're right on top of a rocky shoal. So the lake trout are literally stacked on top of the rocks and pike on the fringes and it's like pretty much almost every cast literally right within sight of the dock again right in front of the camp it doesn't really matter what we throw we kind of drifted off the spot a little bit we're in like 14 feet of water but there's a big cabbagey flat here something a little more subtle it's just a uh, Russell has one Berkeley ripple shot, small one, like a five incher. Watch this. These pike pull harder than any pike I've ever seen for their size. There we go. Russ is using, uh, I think, a Savage Gear eel. Oh, this one could be a little better, actually. Getting one after another after another. And uh, I didn't really want to turn the camera on because it's just almost too frenzy, but uh, this is too good. Oh, yeah. We're still on the same flat right in front of the camp. We got the other boys out here with us. And Chris has one, I think, that it require, might require the cradle. So we're gonna go over and help. Baby. Look at that. That's uh, there's nothing wrong with that pike. Chunky pike, like the, the numbers of pike this size are actually pretty quite incredible. You know, um, and they're fighting like a lake trout. They're pulling out drag. It's crazy. I've never seen pike fishing like Russell's got one already. It only took 10 seconds. What's going on? Oh, that's a nice one. Nothing wrong with that one. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> they fight like it's insane actually how these things pull.
Okay. We're using big grubs. Well, Russell's been using grubs for quite a while now. And they seem to be working, but pretty much everything is working. We dropped off the flat a little bit, 15 feet of water, but there's still tons of pike out here. Watch. <laughs> This is uh, this is definitely more fishing, or sorry, more catching, more catching than fishing. We're doing catching. We're catching right now. We're not fishing. The wind is really picked up. But this is actually a protected spot of the lake. We're still getting kind of pushed around a little bit, so boat control is somewhat of a challenge. But <clears throat> the fish are here in abundance. Oh, I think Russell just missed one, and he's got it. <laughs> They're right on top of the shoal. It's just wild. Not surprisingly, because the uh, the wind is just pounding over it. More pike action. We just slipped off the Lake Trout Shoal over there and into Pike Alley here. <laughs> Russ has a pretty nice one. We've been catching them non-stop on anything. We're just using soft plastics right now, but uh, pretty much everything is working. Here we go. While Russ is landing this nice fish, I'm going to catch one of my own. So we're weeding through all these sort of mid-sized pike. <clears throat> Every once in a while we're getting a pretty good one and uh, we just had catastrophic leader failure <laughs> after the snap opened up after I don't know a hundred fish that happens after a hundred fish that's the way it goes we can take that you know what it's a small price to pay all right the boys just joined us Chris has one on instantly Russell has one as usual he's a machine today your arm must be getting sore here <laughs> And I have to soak it in hot water when we get back to the lodge. It feels like it could be better too. And with a malevolent glare, he slunk back into the depths. Really, really, it's really hard to catch fish on this lake. Oh, Chris has another one. Oh, Russell has one. <laughs> Let's see if we can make it a triple. Eddie is the weak link. Oh, Eddie's got one. <laughs> oh, he had one. Chris has some problems with his. Dueling Pike in the other boat over there. Total chaos. It's cats and dogs living together. Unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, this is awesome. Doesn't get much better. All right, I'm going to do a short tour of Echoing Lake Camp, located on, not surprisingly, Echoing Lake in far, far northwestern Ontario. It's the furthest, most operating lodge of any kind in the province. Incredibly well finished in here. It's all laminate flooring. Big huge table, uh, there's Wi-Fi here, so you can stay connected with the outside world. Satellite television, nice little selection of furniture, wood stove for heat. All the appliances are electric except for the stove, which is gas. But a uh, very large, awesome kitchen. There's coffee brewing here every morning at seven. This is the bedroom that I've been staying in. Again, and very nicely finished inside with all tongue and groove pine electric lighting, very nicely finished three-piece bathroom, uh, vanity sink, flush toilet, really nice shower, all the towels and bedding that you need in here. So there's four bedrooms here. It's a fantastic, fantastic, awesome facility for a large group of people if you want to have the camp to yourself. Super comfortable. 
all the amenities just like home. Very impressive camp. I think it has a lot to offer. Um, we're going to be at the Yelling Lake Outpost later today, so we're going to check that one out and film that one as well. The camp is situated in the narrows here between Ryder and Yelling Lake. They have just a glorious, beautiful, sunny afternoon here right now. Uh, the boats are just 14 foot um, Nadens, it appears, with 15 horse uh, two stroke marks. And the camp is just steps from the water. So, this is about as basic an outpost camp as you're ever going to see. There is a generator for charging stuff, and there's a light inside. Let's see. Wood stove for heat, bunks against one wall, table, couple of chairs, there's a cook stove there somewhere and a basic assortment of cutlery. There is no refrigeration here so we have our cooler with ice and all our, our food and uh, that's it. This is a lake that rarely gets fished ever by anybody um, so if you're ever at the Echo Wing Lake camp it will be quite an experience, absolutely no doubt. We're at the top end of Ryder Lake, the outflow of the Echoing River, fishing some rapids and riffles. We This is the second set of uh, rapids we kind of just navigated down through, casting in here to see what we can find. I don't think another human has ever fished this. Certainly not about to uh, not have done what we're about to do. We just beached the boat, tied it up, and we're gonna walk down with our rods and fish the rapids down there. Just a beautiful set of rapids. There's the boat right there. We just walk down, easy walk along these rocks. See if there's any fishies in here. Oh, there's one. <laughs> I did not take too long. This neck down between the two lakes is just teeming with fish. I don't think it's going to take very long to get another one. Oh, there we go. Walleye. Come here, Mr. Walleye. show everybody this sandwich. There's cheese, there's a layer of cheese, there's a layer of salami, there's a layer of ham, and then on top there's a layer of bacon. It's awesome. Literally right beside the cabin, late evening. I don't know what I got on here, but it's taking me for a ride. What do I got? It feels like a walleye, but it could be a pike. Might have been a walleye, could have been a pike. It's a nice laker. It was a nice laker. Gone, I saw it. That's what you call catastrophic knot error. We're just picking up random walleye. We're not getting huge concentrations of them here. Uh, but the ones we've been getting have been super quality fish. Big pike! That is a surprise. Russell's like, you know what? It could be a pike. There's a little patch of weeds right there. Somewhere right there, there's weeds. That is so cool.
we've kind of both kind of migrated to these husky junior spoons but eh, I said this many times pretty much anything doubled up nice We got a bow mount trolling motor <laughs> all of a sudden pulling us. But I mean, when you're catching six to eight pound lake trout on almost every cast in this kind of weather, man, I don't know if it gets much better. I can't stay away from the soft plastics even though the, uh, the spoons are lethal. Let's see if this thing works. Apparently it works. Doubled up again, what a surprise. Ah, my arm's getting tired. Another double. I got 24 inch 100 pound Flora muskie leader just so you can grab the fish close to the boat. It makes life just so much easier. There's two points up. They start pretty much right up there all the way along the shoreline down to that point right there. And this little stretch of shoreline from that point to this little point right here is kind of a big flat 10 to 12 feet and all boulders and they're just stacked like cordwood in here hey fellas Fishing's a little tough this morning, isn't it? Just took a break from the lake trout to get some walleye. There's a few around here. Those guys have one. This is kind of a neck down. There's an island cluster here between Yelling or at the north end of uh, Ryder Lake. Oh, another big fat female laker. We just got to the spot. I haven't even cast it yet. Rush through his magic spoon out. It's late in the afternoon. We've probably caught, I don't know, a hundred lake trout. We're pretty much whipped. The plane is slated to pick us up in I think about 30, 40 minutes. So we're just gonna land this one last trout and call it a day, a pretty awesome day. The end of an awesome Three days of fishing here at Yelling Lake. Our ride is here. We're about to fly back to the main camp at Echoing. And I'm pretty much worn out from catching fish. What a trip. Not the greatest public speaker. Are you have Isaac interview Isaac? <laughs> I should have pawned this off on Isaac. Okay. I'm sitting here with Son. It's not Son though. Okay, let's let's start it. This is all gonna be edited. <laughs>